All right. Hello, everybody. I think I'm live and everything is probably working. Uh, today, I wanted to do well, really just have a little bit of fun and show people how to add some combat damage text to a game. So if you've got a game where you need combat text and you need some pop-up text or something like that, I'm going to show an easy way to do it and run through this giveaway app, see what it's like, and go through Play With The Balance and kind of show off some of the changes I've made and look for bugs. So let me switch over to a view where you can actually see what I'm seeing, what I've been looking at um, in my little tiny bit of spare time. Let me move my big old head over here too. And this is hooked up right now to chat. It's um, hooked up to our chat. For some reason, I'm getting really bad video quality. Let me know if you guys can still, if you have any problems seeing things, but. Okay, hopefully it's working. <laughs> I think it, it's looking better now. The connection status is, is no longer showing me an error. All right, so this is the giveaway app that I set up for running giveaways during the game dev show every Sunday. So you can just join by choosing a race in a class and I went through and did a little bit of cleanup work to make it so that we can see how many of each different race and class are available, added some modifiers to the different races and... Um, did a bunch of other little tiny tweaks to it. But one of the things that I want to do is add in some over-the-head combat tech. So it looks like we've got four people in here. If anybody wants to just join real quick, once we get eight people, I'll hit the button, show what I'm talking about, and then we'll um, go through the process of adding in some text. And I think I want to add like a crit indicator. I don't want to do a whole lot of complicated stuff. Just add a couple nice little features to this thing and show the process and show somewhat of the code and, and the code for this is in parts a little bit of a mess some spots it's good some spots it's kind of in transition i would say but it's a uh, it's definitely interesting so go ahead and just join you can pick um here let me bring up the help again any one of the races up at the top and the uh, different species down below you want to be a lizard and knight is the big uh dude with armor they got black armor and an axe it's just the character model i think i'm going to be switching that over by the way um with andrew from infinity pbr and getting in a bunch of his low poly models instead so i think that'll be pretty interesting hopefully we can do that either this week or next week probably on a live stream as well all right we got 12 people in here so let's just hit start and we'll let the battle go and then I'll show, or I'm going to run a whole bunch of these battles. So if you missed this one, don't worry, you'll be in, in the next one. You can see already like, everybody's got different stats now. Um, all of the races in different classes, or races that enter the classes up here have slightly different stats. There's a lot of Necromancers. I wonder if a Necro is going to win. But see how they're taking damage right now? And you can see the health bar is like going down and going up. I want to show just some floating damage text. That's it. Just a little bit of floating damage text up here that shows maybe an entry. Um, it doesn't even have to be a lot because I think just one entry is probably enough. I'm never going to show more than one number over a thing. I don't want to have like spam of tons and tons of numbers and it's going to be like four at a time basically popping up. So I'm thinking that and then maybe some heal numbers too, like something that's like the default, the heal. Oh, Necromancers, the, is Necro the default? The default should be going through um, alternating and giving you a different one, but I, it's possible that I broke that. Um, oh, you know what? I, I think I did break that because I was testing it and I set everything to grab like the first race and first class instead. Oh yeah, there are no more ninjas. Although I think I might have made, I thought I made ninja work with that, with assassin. Apparently not. All right, so I'm going to let this run through, make sure that we don't run into any errors real quick and see who wins. Okay, I think one thing that I've noticed is that when I was doing a little bit of testing that a warrior versus paladin fight is slow. The warrior's got a lot, a bit more health at least. And the paladins, uh, as you can probably see looking at their health, they heal over time. So they got a little bit of healing. It looks like the paladin's probably going to win this. I'm just going to let him, let him finish it out without speeding it up. It's almost there. Oh, yep. Paladin wins. All right. Let's get to the... Here, I'm just going to speed this up and let it run through real quick. We'll see who wins and then we'll start adding in some damage text. It's going to be the first one I want to put in. All right. We got a paladin, a wizard, and a necro. Two crabs and a knight. Let's see what, what's going to win. Go. Okay. A knight, paladin versus a crab necromancer. 
Whoa, that crab necro is destroying him. <laughs> All right, that wasn't even close. All right, so let's put in some damage bars or just some, not damage bars, but damage numbers so we can see the damage uh, that's being done instead of just watching the bar go down. So I'm going to find my battler prefab, which I believe is just in the prefabs folder, and go open up that battler. And there are a couple options here. Um, I want to talk about them before I go with the one that I'm going to do, because I'm going to do the, the simplest one first, because I think that's just really what I need. But one option is I could build a system where I have maybe a pool of text items or pop-up texts or hover texts, and then you know, make a system where I can pass, call into that, say, hey, pop up a hover text here with this number and, and scale it and slide it up. And that would probably make sense if I was going to do it anywhere other than right over a player's head um, and if I needed to worry about scaling or anything else. But since I'm just going to do it directly over the player's head and I already have a canvas on each player that already has their name on it, I'm just going to use this canvas and make the text go right above their head. In fact, I'll start by just showing some text that's for the damage and then maybe fading it out. And then we can worry about making it float away or something if we want all right, so let's do that now. I've got my canvas here underneath my battler, and he's just showing the default um, model. This is how the models are set up on this, by the way. There's just a bunch of different models from a little asset pack, all here as children, and there's a script up here on this, uh, where is it at? The battler's, no, the character model script right here. So it just picks the one that's assigned or that matches here by name. So you call knight, it gets signed to the knight species, and then it switches over to the matching character model, and it just matches them by name. All right, and then all that does is disable all of those other ones that are in that list, right here, the character models list, and enable the one that's uh, not in it. So it loops through them here. Oh, I'll open it up real quick. Why not? So it loops through them. Where is it at? Uh, oh, right here on line 28. Let's zoom in a bunch. Loops through them all, sets them to inactive, and then tries to find the correct one. And this part's actually a little bit redundant because now we do a character model that we grab from the race. So it doesn't actually need to do a lot of this, but I'm not going to play with this code right now. But essentially, it's just going through and enabling the correct one. But it doesn't necessarily, need, it's doing a little bit of extra work that it doesn't need to do right now. All right, let's jump back in, though, and just get to the part I actually said I was going to do, which is adding in the damage health, the health, the damage text going up there, so saying that we took damage. So I'm going to take the name, duplicate it, hit W. Let's see, can I hit W? Let's go into 2D mode, F and W. Let's move this up. So I'm just going to grab the Y. We are backwards. That's not a big deal. I'm going to rename this to damage, or let's call this a health modifier. And I'm going to put, ah, I think I'll just leave it as health modifier like that. Let's see, no scripts on there. Just making sure I didn't duplicate something like a script that was on that name. And then let's go take a look at where's this name actually referenced. I believe that's on the battler and it's used, yeah, right here, the name tag on the character model. So when we set that model, we, um, we also set the name tag there. I'm going to go to the battler and just add a reference to it for now. And this is a little bit sloppy because I've got my character referencing some UI components that are children of it. Again, I just don't care because it, it's not a big deal for this project. This isn't something that matters and there's no reason in making it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm just going to take that health modifier text mesh pro and add a reference to the to it on the battler, which is also, see this, this script is getting a little bit big, 240 something lines. It's pretty much at my extents for how big I want a script to be, but I'm going to leave it there for now. So I'm going to add a serialized field, TMP underscore text, and just the base class for text mesh pro text works for in-game ones like world space and UI element ones. And I'm going to call this, what did I name it again? I got to go look. My memory is terrible on these things. Health modifier underscore health modifier. I'm going to call it TMP text. I'm going to make it really obvious because I, I might confuse myself with health modifier um let's actually let's call this health changed there we go health change tmp i like that better instead of health modifier and then i'm going to rename it over here too instead of health modifier 
I'll rename it to Health Change TMP. Hey, what's up, Jason? Amir, I see. I, I just realized all you guys are in there chatting. All right, let's get this in. Oh, I'm going to change that to H, capital H, and then we'll jump back into the script. All right. So where was I? Okay, got my health change text in. I'm just going to update this at first and show something in here whenever I take damage. So when I take damage, I think there's a take hit method. Yep, take hit, which takes some damage and runs a coroutine. So there's a little bit of a delay and instead of timing it properly with animation events or anything else, it's a generic setting between the attack time and the impact. So that it's always the same, it's 0.35 seconds. So we wait for that long and then we call took hit and modify the amount of damage. So we could actually just call, ooh, that, that, that seems like a, a cleaner way to do it. So when we take a hit, we'll just register for took hit and then show the text there. And that just means that on our health change text, we'll add a health change script. I'll we'll just call it health change text. That's gonna be the name of the script. And then here, let's, let's delete out our start and update. We'll zoom in a bunch. We'll get a reference to the battler. So I'll do an on validate. I'll say battler equals get component and parent and we'll just get the battler. And we'll go take a look at that in one second, show what that looks like. Create a serialized, oops, a serialized field for it. We got a serialized field for the battler, and that's here's the health change text mesh pro object. The battler is right up here on the parent. So we're gonna get back a reference to this battler here. Now we're not gonna need the other reference that we already added to the battler. I'll delete that in a second. What we're gonna do instead is in our health change text, let's uh, turn this into an expression body, so shrink it down a little bit. Let's say on enable, let's do it in on enable, battler dot, and what was that event name again? Let's see, I had it a second ago. Let's go back into the battler, uh, took hit. Took hit is public, right, yeah. So we'll say battler dot took hit plus equals show hit text. Uh, it seems good. Generate a method for show hit text. It's gonna give me another method down here that doesn't do anything. And this is going to just set the text. So let's clear that out. Let's go into our on validate and let's get a reference to the text mesh pro object here. Say underscore text equals get component TMP underscore text. Then we'll generate a serialized field for it. And then in the show hit text, we'll say underscore text, which is that text mesh pro object. Remember right now we're working on this health changed TMP object. So we'll say text dot set text and we'll just set it to OBJ, which is actually um, damage taken. I'm just gonna oops, refactor, rename that control R, control R. Just hit hold control, hit R twice, gives you that. So we want to set it to that, but this is not a string, it's an integer, so we have to do to string because the set text method won't auto convert it. Now, since we're calling this on, on enable and registering it, we should turn it into an expression body, duplicate it with control D, change this from enable to disable, and then add a minus instead of a plus so that we deregister for it if we disable this object. I'm gonna turn this into an expression body for now too, because why not? And then we'll go back over to that battler and in the battler, we have that reference that I added, that serialized field for health change TMP. Don't need that anymore, so we'll shift delete that as well. Do a quick build. Yeah, I can move my head kind of out of the way. Actually, here, let me go kind of down here. So that way you can see all of the code. Or actually, let's go down here. I'll slide way over to the corner until we get back into Unity. All right, so now we've got, I think, all of the code written for that. Um, Let's just try it. I, I expect now the text is going to pop up, show up, and stay there indefinitely. So after I take damage, it'll, I'll have a text there, and then you know the new text will show up. So I'm just going to start with whoever's already entered. If you change in between times that I play, your changes will um, show up. Ooh, wait, the text. Oh, the text default text says left player. That's why nobody's taken damage, so it hasn't changed that text. Um, oh, what's the null reference exception? Okay, it's not working. We're getting a null reference exception. I got my console window over here and you can see it's in on enable, 
handle. So battler took hit, battler's not being found. So the on validate, interesting. Why is on validate not finding the battler in the parent? Let's go check that out again. Let's dock the console down there. I got two console windows. Oh, let's close this one. Close tab. All right, we'll go find our battler prefab again, which again, I think was just in, there it is, in my prefabs folder. Go find that health changed object. It does have a reference to the battler. So what's the issue here? I might've missed something. Let's go, let's change this text. I'm gonna change the damage text to um, just say zero for now so that I know what it is and that it's updated. Um, and then I'm gonna clear that out in a moment. Let's see, so I shouldn't need to assign anything in the inspector unless I missed something. Uh, let's turn this off of play maximized for one second. Get our console up there and see. So there are some errors still. What did I, okay, I missed something. This health change text, ah, battler is none. Why is the battler none? The battler exists here. Interesting. I'm not sure why it's not finding the battler. I'm gonna add in a way you can just find it. Um, if anybody can think of why it's not finding the battler spawning the prefab, which it's a little confusing. I, I probably missed something. Um, probably something obvious or something weird going on in the spawning code that I forgot I did. So I'm not too worried about it. I'll just make sure that, oh, what? I wanted to leave that in on validate too. Actually, let's say if if it's null, then we'll try to get it again. But the the battler should just be getting set in on validate and always be there. So I'm not sure what I've done. I probably did something bad. Uh, I don't know. Not a big deal. This should have fixed it. Let's see. Console looks good now. The battlers are in. I can start the fight. Everybody's got a number of zero. Let's go to maximized for a second. Oh, I guess uh, I can stay in the corner, I guess. It doesn't matter. You just won't see the uh, the race class or the races down there. All right, let's see. So we can see the damage being taken. Okay, because it's always the same damage by the other person unless they crit. You never take any damage, huh? Is nobody ever critting? Is that what's happening? Wait, where? how many assassins do we have? We only have one assassin. Let's see the, the assassin come out. Where's the assassin? Ah, right there. This guy has a high chance of critting, so. Let's see if his damage changes or if he always does. Ah, there we go. So he went from 11 and he did 31 that, that, that next two hits. That looks better. All right, let's check it out. Oh, my react. Removing the script and re-add it. That's possible, yeah. Looking through the chat. Okay, let's continue. So uh, I there's lots of questions in there, but I think they're all a bit of a distraction and I'll forget what I'm doing if I jump over to them. So let's find that health change text script again, which is of course in the wrong folder because I just right click and or just hit add component and started typing it. And let's make it a little bit better so that it shows the amount and then just disables after a few seconds or something like that. So I think um, when we show the hit text, I'll just turn that into kicking off a coroutine. Say, uh, actually, here, we'll set the text, and then we'll kick off a coroutine. It just, um, actually, maybe I'll just do a, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Yeah, I'll just start a coroutine that waits and just disables it for now. I'm thinking I, I could make it pretty and flashy, but I want to just kind of get, I'd rather spend time balancing things than trying to make things pretty and flashy when I know I can just pop in with Jason's story for 10 minutes and make it pretty and stuff afterwards. <laughs> It'll go, go a lot better. So let's just do a routine to wait for a second. So say wait a second. There we go. That, that's actually just perfect because that's what I said. So I'll call it wait a second. I'll make it wait for a second. Ah, hit enter. There we go. Cut it out. Yield return new. Wait four seconds. One. Don't need to optimize that still. And then after that, we'll just set the text to blank. There we go. So we'll clear it out 
and then set it. And here I want this to actually be negative damage taken. So let's turn this into an interpolated string instead. And I don't need the two string part here because, ah, oh, come on, selection. There we go. Let, let's take a quick look at that. So instead of doing the two string, we've actually shortened it down. It's actually quite a few less characters. You just do a quotation marks, the negative, and then, oh, I missed the dollar sign. There we go. The negative and then the braces around the variable. This will just get calculated out to the value. It'll still get two stringed, but here we don't have to type out as many characters. So it's four instead of whatever we had, eight, and we have the negative there. Let's try that real quick. Make sure that the text is red though. And then we'll clear it up. And by the way, again, this is definitely not the most optimal way to do these little pop-up texts, but for the scenario that I have, it's the simplest and the one that really just fits. There's no reason to do anything more complicated or more powerful because it's just not gonna ever be an issue with this. If we get to the point where we have 10,000 people doing giveaways or joining giveaways, I'll worry about that. But I don't expect that that's gonna happen anytime soon. So not a concern. All right, we'll press play. Watch me say that and then 10,000 people jump in. I just can't tell you, that'd be cool, <laughs> but I don't expect it. All right, so here we go. Let's hit play, let's start it and go again. We got a lot of necromancers still. Why do we still have so many necromancers? I'll have to um, make sure that the code is set to randomize those. Okay, so there we go, we got pop-up text. People taking some damage. Everybody's dying. Every, uh, they all start at a zero. Huh. Okay, I want to slow this down real quick. Is watching it at, at double speed doesn't doesn't work well. Okay, I can see what's happening. Let's, uh, here, let's speed past these two and get on to another set of four fighters. Definitely need to fix that issue with paladins though. They live too long. This fight, uh, I don't want to have to speed up fights constantly. All right, let's see. So here you can see people taking damage. Ooh, 32. So there you saw the the crit. Oh, I kind of saw, I saw the crit. Because <laughs> I saw the, the number got bigger. Interesting. Oof. Oh, and I changed out the death particles there too. All right, let's see, sorry, I was just reading through chat again. It makes me silent when I start looking through the chat, but let's see um, who wins this real quick. We got assassins, assassins, assassins with their crits. All right, that looks cool. I wanna um, really quickly call out the crits and then add in some heal text and then um, would run a real quick giveaway and then I'd probably start wrapping stuff up because I said I only have like about an hour today. But I had a little bit of time. I figured why not hop in and hang out. And then while the giveaway runs, I just take some questions and uh, and see see what everybody's up to. See if anybody's got anything uh, they want to ask or anything interesting to share. So let's go find... Um, oh, I'm going to show one of the things I was playing around with to get my balance stuff down was a quick menu item hotkey to switch everything over to be crabs. I actually didn't make this into crabs. I made it um, into the first thing, which ended up being a whole beholder. So it should be like first or default um, t dot display name. Let's see if I can get this typed in here, right? Equals crab. And I'm gonna split that into a new line so you can all see it there. So try to find the first one that's a crab. And then I'll just say, um, actually here, let's get that into a variable. So say var crab equals that. And then if crab is equal to null, then we'll assign it to just the first species. So I'll just take this without the filter 
grab equals and we'll just assign it right there. So zoom out a little bit so you can see all of it. Here, just find a crab and then assign that. So this is my hotkey to make it so that I could test everybody without having to worry about the um, the species balance because I had changed a lot of the species in there. The uh, editor in here that I'm using is JetBrains Rider, which is the one that we give away using this actual app every uh, every Sunday. So. Come join on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, and give away a license every week. All right, let's turn this off. I'm going to hit Alt-C. Look at that. Everybody is a crab. And now I'll start playing, and we can watch real quick a bunch of crabs battle on 20x speed. And see down in the bottom. Oh, here. Let me move my myself here. Down in the bottom corner, we got 13 crabs and lots of assassins, some rat knights. Paladin, wizard, paladin, and assassin. Who wins? The assassin. All right. So let's stop playing again. And then I want to go in and again show the crit damage text. And then I want to show heal text. And then after that, we'll run a quick giveaway and just chat chat with everybody there. So if you got questions you're thinking of, um, start preparing them now, I guess, because we'll I'll start taking them in a few minutes. All right. Let's go back into the battler. And when you take a hit, if the hit is a um, critical hit, then what I want to do is show the text some different way. Let me find out where we take a hit, though. So in take hit, take hit gets called by the battle arena, or actually it gets called on the battler and passes in um, the attack damage here. So attack here, I think, is what determines if we crit. So we take it. So the way that the attack works, I'll, I'll just explain this to everybody, is that uh, you roll, um, here, let's, let's go back. Before we, the first thing I do is decide who actually performs the attack. You notice that like when they fight, they go back and forth in rounds. Like one person will hit, then the other person will hit, then the other person will hit, the other person will hit. It just fought in rounds so that every second or whatever the delay is, maybe two seconds, there's an attack round. Uh, each character rolls, the right side and the left side roll, and whichever side rolls greater does the damage. So if the left roll is higher, then the right battler takes a hit from the left battler, and the left battler's hit amount comes from the attack method, so it returns that back in. Now what I want to do is have this take hit method know if my attack was a crit. So I want this take hit to take in maybe like another bull crit like was crit something like that and then have this taken a was crit and then pass that in right here so it'll start just writing up the code to, to make it happen so we'll get a was crit into take it delayed so that when we take a hit or when we take a critical hit um, we can call that out now there's actually another way we could do this so what i could do here is now pass this in on my took hit as a parameter for whether or not that hit was a crit. Um, let me think. Or um, I'm trying to think. Another better, there are a couple different options here. So I could pass that in as a second parameter and then kind of string it all the way. Let's just do it that way first. There, there are some cleaner ways that I could do it, but I want to just do it the, the simplest way first, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about how we can clean it up. So we'll just add this as a parameter onto the took hit event, which means that the things that are registering and listening to it now need to pass that in, or the things that are invoking it need to pass it in, like this uh, take hit delayed method that calls or invokes it. So I'll say was crit. And then the things that are registering for it, the methods that they're registering need to have a parameter for it. So here in play to kit, we'll say bool was crit. And then here we could actually, if we wanted do like a take critical hit on the animator, which might be kind of worthwhile to do. So maybe this isn't a terrible option to have it just passed in. Let's do the same for the particles. When we take a hit, the particle player on the thing, or the player particles, it probably should be battler particles, but the particle system on that battler just shows the hit particle, calling this show hit particles, and we need to add in the extra parameter, bool was crit. 
And then I think we have one more on the text, right? The one that we just added. Oh, two more because we deregister and register, but it's just one method, the show hit text. So here we'll say bool was crit. Now, if it was a crit, we'll just change the text. So we'll say if was crit um, text dot, I don't know. What do we want to do here? I could uh, change the color or we could just maybe we could just do in a color a color tag. Um, yeah, let's let's just do it with a let's just do a color tag. Let's do some tags here. I'll say else we'll do the normal. So duplicate that other line, and here I'll say like color equals red. I don't remember what my other color was already. And then maybe like a font size. I forget the font size tags too. Is it large or do you give it a number? I can't remember anymore. Well, we'll just put something in there and see. I can't remember the, the font size things for Text Mesh Pro. Let's jump over. Actually, if I jump over to the editor, I can probably just type it in and figure it out real quick. Or if anybody remembers um, before I find it, type it in and let me know. Let's go find one of these text objects. If I can click through, I've got way too many objects here. Let's go find a log canvas. Find this one. Is it... No, let's see, size, yes, it's size, okay. Size equals, and then a number. Get rid of the word font, we'll make it size, and we'll make it like 60, and then on the normal one, actually here I'm gonna duplicate this, take it, um, I'll just cut it and paste over here. On this one, I'll make it like a orange, and then we'll do like a 42 point font. There we go. I should probably set up some actual like, just fonts or some colors or something in here, but again, I would just pick ugly ones anyway, so it doesn't doesn't help too much. All right. By the way, if you're watching still live, uh, hit, hit the thumbs up button. <laughs> it may as well remember to ask. Oh, we got one build error. Let's go check it out. Or two build errors. So no argument for was crit on the battler take it. Oh, that's right. So we're calling take hit and. Uh, I forgot what I was doing here. So take hit needs a was crit method or a was crit or ah, a was crit bool. So let's make this return back a bool. And um, a bool and an int. So where's our was crit check? Roll needed to critically strike. So here, let's see. Let's see this. So I'm going to take this part right here, cut it. It was crit, and then I'm gonna say bool was crit equals that. So here I'm checking to see when we do the attack, the, the way that the critical strikes work, so everybody wants to min-max this stuff. Uh, we take a critical strike chance, a default of 10, and then we add in whatever their bonus chance is that comes from the racing class combo. Then we check to see if their roll was greater than whatever that amount was. So by default, you got a 10% chance. You roll one to 100. If you get over 90, then you got a critical. Here, you can modify that. If you got you know plus 20 here, then you just have to get over 70. Then it was a critical. You still have to get the higher roll and get over the critical. So if it was crit, then we use critical damage. Otherwise, we use the normal damage. In fact, I was actually going to refactor this a little bit and clean this up a little bit. So I was actually going to say that make this a little bit easier to read. So damage equals the normal damage plus the stat changes. I'll say if was crit, then I'm gonna add, say damage plus equals the critical amount. I, I just feel like it's a little bit easier to, to read and comprehend. And then I can move that down kind of like that and clean it up a little bit. So calculate the damage, figure out if it was a crit, and if so, add the critical damage. 100 times easier to read. And then what we've done here is change it. So instead of returning an int, we return an int and a bool, and then just return them both here. Let's do another build. What did I miss here? Looks like, fun. is this generally how I organize? Uh, no, the code has, um, it's touched quite a few hands and bounced around a bit. It's uh, only very loosely representative, I would say, of of how I handled the code. Um, let's generate a method here. What's the problem here? 
What did I miss on my... Oh, it's the the type here. Um, let, let's, let's just wrap this real quick. I'm going to call take hit. And that's really what I need. Uh, I really just need to take this. So what happened was I changed my return type and I was not paying close enough attention. Where's my take hit method? Let's go find it. Take hit. And I'm gonna turn this to be not an expression body. We'll zoom it in real quick. And instead of having two parameters, it's gonna have, whoops, one parameter that has both of them. So it's gonna have our int and our bool. And I'll call this uh, hit data. And then the first one, the amount is going to be hit data dot item one. And here's where it starts to get a little bit ugly. And I think that you could use a refactor into just a simple struct or data structure for the damage info or splitting out the crit info from the hit. Although I kind of like having the crit info there. So say hit data dot, oops, dot item two, which is just gonna be the second one there. And I do need to go down to the bottom and delete this extra method that I don't need. Save, build, I think I've got one error where I renamed something to take hit two. So go back, replace that, save, do another build. And now I should have critical damage getting passed in. So press play. And press start, we've got lots of assassins, lots of nice high crit chance. Yeah, let's see who does what. See if we can notice the criticals. Oh, I got to get those zeros cleared out too. Let's see. Let people take some damage. Oh, oh okay. So there's a <laughs> a small... Oh, I, I messed up on the, the text there. Let, let's go fix that. So that's in the health change text. I left in the word font on the closing brace one. I removed it for here where, where it was good. Where it didn't need, where on the start part, which fixed the beginning part, but the uh, actual end part is bad. Okay, so was that. Oh, and then the default text. Let's let's fix that too. So in on enable, let's register for it, and then say text dot set text, and we'll just set it to string dot empty. All right, so that way we'll get some nice clear text instead of a bunch of big fat zeros. Then we'll press play and start again. Hit H. All right, how many people have joined? Only 15 people have joined the battle. If you want to join in the battle, I mean, it does help with the testing. So just pick a, uh, a race in a class. Doesn't matter which ones. Uh, it will help just get a couple more characters in here. So let's watch some damage. No crits yet. What are the, the assassins are light blue. So I'm looking at that tutorial surgeon right there. Oh, I didn't see if there was a crit. Right, let's watch. Come on. Finish them off. All right. I got to remember to nerf the paladins too. I do that before we actually do a giveaway. All right. We got a couple more. We got lots of assassins. Let's look for some red damage now. Come on, crits. Okay, no crits. Hmm, this is getting suspicious. Maybe I'm blind. If anybody saw a crit so far, let me know, but I have not noticed one. And make sure I'm not crazy. This is actually working. Oh, you know what? I'm seeing nothing sometimes. I wonder if those are the crits. Interesting. Let me look at the code again real quick. So if it's a crit, it should be going to red, yeah. And then change it, it looks like it's normal to me. Why am I not seeing it? Okay, let's put in a break point. I wanna just add in a, a point here and make sure that uh, what is crit is getting called. Oh, the crit font size could be too big. Yep, that's uh, a very, very, very valid point. So let's go with uh, 42 and let's change this to 32. Thank you for, for pointing that out. I didn't even think about that. I would have sat here for 
half an hour trying to figure out why my code wasn't calling, not realize that my font was too big. That's probably almost definitely the issue. Let's crank up the speed and see if we see some red text start showing up. Yep, there we go. Now I see red ones. That looks better. Thank you, chat. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, whoever called that, who called that first? Was it Amir? Yeah. Nice. All right, so let's see, I've got a couple more fighters. I really don't like how that right hand side's kind of underneath the text, but. Let me see. Anything else I want to change? No, uh, I think that, that'd be good for now. I was thinking, okay, let's um, let's do a real quick balance test. Um, and then, okay, no paladins. Zero paladins? Okay, maybe, maybe we won't do a balance test. We'll just do a, uh, a normal fight real quick after, after this one ends. I want to see who wins this. If it's still an assassin. Is it a necro or an assassin? An assassin again, huh? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it one more time and see if an assassin wins. And if so, I might have to do a tiny, tiny assassin nerf real quick. I've got a lot of... Everybody's an assassin now. Oh, I like the idea of moving the, uh, the class list over to the left. It's probably not a bad, a bad thought. <laughs> Snap that over there. A lot more room. All right, yeah, assassins didn't just win it. This time, well, I guess an assassin did win again, huh? But there were there were double the number of assassins. I think that that's a uh, an unfair test. And in my own testing, assassins were not the number one class. So all right, let's get this thing going. We'll do an actual battle giveaway, and then just kind of um, go through questions as we run through at normal speed. So I'm gonna look at questions, and once we get to forty people, I'll start the. Uh, the battle and then i guess for the winner i'll just send you a code to redeem a, um a free hoodie or notebook or whatever thing you want i send you code you can use it for whichever whichever thing you want from my site so just just shoot me an email and and i will send you the code go grab a hoodie or a mug or notebook or whatever you think will be useful for you for for helping us test this awesome stuff out and then again, remember, next uh, Sunday, we'll give away a free copy of JetBrains Rider. Oh, we already got 41 ballers. I see a lot of people typing, though, so I'm going to give it a minute and see what kind of questions people had in here. What was that thing you did with creating a method with multiple types for one parameter? So that's um, part of the newer versions of C Sharp where you can return back a tuple of data so you can actually just define it by putting both of the, or more than one type. So it doesn't just have to be one type. Let me, uh, I think that was my attack method of the battler, right? It's no, oh yeah, this one right here, the attack one. So it's not, this is not a format that I use often, but it's something that I use a lot of the time in temporary situations before I've really decided on what the structure is gonna look like and how I actually wanna use the code. But essentially just return back an object that has an integer and a Boolean as parameters. And then you can pass that in or use this as an object type. And it, it essentially just gives you back an object that has that. It used to be something you could create before by defining a tuple of some types. Now it's just nice and simple and built in so that you don't have to add in all that extra stuff. You just give it the types. It's really handy. Um, eventually, long term, I would probably just replace this with a struct of like attack data that has like the info about the attack. If it was a crit, if it you know mitigated or avoided damage or did some other weird thing, you know whatever special info I needed about the attack. Uh, let's go to see if there are any other questions real quick. We got a lot of people in here, so I'm gonna. I think I might just start the battle. I'll, I'll let it get to sixty people since we have fifty-seven. Go to a nice even number, and then I'll hit the button. All right, so I've, I see I've been learning to make editors for the first time using Odin, actually a really powerful tool. Don't work for them or anything. Yes, Odin is super awesome. Highly recommend it. Um, if you can use it at work, you probably should. The only reason that I don't use it very often in things is that I can't um, expect that everybody knows what it is or has it. So I, I, it's the only reason I don't use it in all of my projects otherwise. Like for actual commercial projects, I, I think it's... Uh, almost a definite 
a definite use. Like you'd probably be using it. All right, we're gonna start the fight. We got, it looks like mostly crabs and mostly assassins. We'll watch it and I'm gonna take a look at more chat as well. Why not scroll the battler list along the bottom like ticker tape? No, not a bad idea. I, I'd like to have um, a lot more just stuff here. Or it'd be cool to have this thing as like an overlay too so I could have people like fighting along the bottom. Um, I don't know, there are lots of lots of thoughts on it, but you know, avoid wasting time on it. It's like a fun hobby project that it's easy to do and fun to play with, but I got to make sure I don't blow too much time working on it. We're really low on berserkers, huh? And bards. Woo. Down one more berserker. And lizards. Lizards have a life gain? I think they have like a life regen. Built in. I wonder who the lizard is if they're gonna if they're gonna do good. The crabs were winning a lot, so. All right, assassins. Let's see the assassins. Ooh, thirty-five damage. So the assassins seem to do probably really good against the lower health guys because they just need a couple of lucky hits. Um, but I, I bet that assassins probably don't do great against paladins because they just keep healing and and the necros. That's probably what's happening. The Necros and Paladins are keeping the Assassins down. We've got a lot of Assassins in here. Let's see what other chat. Um, what would you suggest to someone who's making games at home for a year or so? Get a job as a junior or try to make it in the market with a hit? Oh, definitely get a job as a junior developer. Um, get a job as a junior developer and try to make a game um, on the side. Unless you've got just you know, cash stacked away and you don't need to worry about it ever. And even in a year, you're not going to care. Um, I, I would do that because you're going to learn really fast from other people and make a lot of connections working as a junior developer. And you'll probably get a lot more done a lot faster. Not necessarily always, but if you, if you get a job as a junior developer in a place that has some experienced developers that are going to, Ooh, teach and mentor you. Good, good job there. Jeremiah Necro came through. Um, then I think that that's probably what I would recommend. All right, let's see. We got a lot of paladins and a lot of assassins still. Low on bards. Low on berserkers, too. I forget what berserkers had. I think they had a slight... Berserker was one of the few classes that had a downside, but had some big positives, too. They had, like, a lower starting health, but had some regen and uh, damage and other stuff. See, what other questions we got? Someone just got rejected after a three week job interview. There was a bit more intense than they would have expected from a junior job, but learned a lot. Yeah, um, and when you get rejected from those jobs, if you, especially on an interview that goes for that long, I would try to talk to them and just ask them what the things were that, um, yeah, I think it's really important to work. If you can, not everybody will help you with this, but ask them what the things were that went wrong, like the things that disqualified you or the things that made them go with somebody else where, where you were lacking. And if possible, like if the thing that you were lacking in is something that you can catch up on and, you know, learn and be proficient in, you know, in a day, then get back to them and just tell them thank you. I just, you know, figured this stuff out. And this is probably how I would answer this next time by the way but thanks again for the opportunity they may end up calling you back in and you know reevaluating you just because you're that interested in trying but worst case you're going to be figuring out the problems that you had for the next one so that when you're interviewing at the next place um it's quite a bit easier and in my general experience what i recommend to most people is to um oh weird why does that say 173 of 100 on the health I don't even know what that is. That that assassin uh, rat, he's hacking. I don't, I don't know how that happens. That's interesting. I wonder if that's why assassins were winning. Um, but oh, what was I saying now? Um, oh, I totally lost it. Oh, so the things that you get that are issues for that company are going to be issues for other companies. So if you can find out what those things are and just be ready for them the next time, it'll make a big difference. And what I'm saying is that usually when people are looking for a new job, what I recommend to them is 
before they go applying for the jobs that they really, really want and really are interested in, go apply for some jobs that you think might be kind of cool, but you're not even 100% sure you want. So that way, when you're there, you're less stressed out and you can kind of go through that process of interviewing. No, I mean, like go for jobs that you definitely don't want, but go for things that like, you know, maybe you would take this job if it's if it's the right fit, but you're not 100% sure. Maybe it's on some kind of game or some project that isn't the ideal thing that you want to work on. But, you know, if the project was cool enough and good enough, you could. It'll help a lot with nerves and just practice on interviewing so you get used to talking to people. And you might just come across a really good opportunity along the way that something that you thought you probably weren't interested in but turned out to be a good one. But most of the time, I think it's just good because it will kind of... You might even bomb those first couple of interviews and it'll be totally fine because you won't really care about those jobs. But you can really take that time to reflect and think about why what went wrong there and how you can do better in the next ones. I mean, a lot of time it's just about connecting with people personally when it comes to the job. Being able to prove that you can do the basics of the job and then connecting to them personally seems to make the, the biggest difference. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um... Yeah, lots and lots of questions. Oh, lots of chat. Not so much lots of questions. How does Unity read YouTube's chat? That is a good question. So there's actually a YouTube API. Google has APIs for all of their stuff. One of them is the YouTube one. And the way that this works is it calls into that API and reads all of the chat messages from some last point. So I give it the point to read from and it just kind of continues on and reads them. And every 10 seconds right now, it grabs the latest messages, parses them, it knows who sent them. So that's how it gets your, your name. And then it knows what text you sent. And if you type in any of the words that match, then it just kind of sets you to that, that combination. But it's pretty easy. You can actually do quite a bit more with the API. But some of the things require um, extra authentication and stuff. When, one of the things I did when I totally broke this was I was starting to set it up so it could just find all of my chats and just hit a button to select the chat so I didn't have to go in and manually do it. But that looked like it was a tiny bit more complex and broke everything and I didn't have time to finish it. So it's it's all available there, though. You just have to go through the OAuth setup stuff and, and get the keys and, not too complicated if you've done any web API calls. Um, if you haven't, it might seem complicated. And I would probably start with something that requires no authentication and then move on to doing Google Google APIs afterwards. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, assassins are down to six. And we got a necro versus a warrior there. Looks like the necro is probably going to win it. The Necro is, by the way, uh, you might have guessed, life tap on hit. So that's why he's constantly healing. And uh, yes, yeah, so for the YouTube API, the question in the chat was, does it have to be your channel that you're reading the chat from? And yeah, you have to authenticate with um, an account that has access to your channel at least. All right, so Aaron asked a question about uh, how to pull about pooling game objects, and he says, "I know you have to pool game objects and native resources, but how are regular classes or class objects garbage collected? Is it the same way as regular .NET, or is there a dark side to this too?" No, it's I, from my understanding, it's exactly the same as normal .NET stuff. It's just that most of your classes and the majority of projects that I see. Um, are spawned through some mono behavior. So the reference holding on to them and really controlling the the life cycle and when it gets collected is that mono behavior, just because that's the thing that, that's instantiating it is almost always the case. Uh, Dennis asked what this game is. It's not actually a game. It's really just a little app that I made to do giveaways um, for fun. So we can, we're, the first version was just a random number generator where we did it all in Rider and then just started expanding it out. So people could have something fun and visual to watch while we um, talk about other game dev stuff and pick pick a winner, make it kind of interesting, and now try to figure out the best race class combo. So we got two wizards in the finals. Oh, no, we have one wizard, one warrior, and one assassin. So I'm going to pause real quick. This is the wizard here versus the assassin. You can see the assassin's got slightly lower health. 
that's actually because he's a demon. I think demons have lower health, increased damage. And the werewolf, I believe... Ooh, yeah, I saw that damage hit. 33, look at that crit. Okay, that wasn't even close. <laughs> All right, now we've got a warrior, which has giant increased health. Poof, there you go, there's the particle. So we got Tupac, <laughs> Long Dong, or Turok, Peter. Okay, we'll see, we'll see who wins. We got two. Oh, let's slow this down. Oh man, this is a tough one. So warriors mostly just have big health, but they also have a little bit of damage boost. This is so close. All right. Well, Tupac, um, shoot me an email, just Jason at Game Talk Courses, and I will send you your hoodie. But I almost feel like I should send you a pair of Tupac socks. I got my Tupac socks sitting right over there, hanging up. So it seems like a. Like that would be more appropriate, but yeah, well, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's um, stop playing. I'm going to jump over to chat for one more second, see if anybody's got anything else, and then I think we'll um, probably wrap it up. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to talk to everybody about real quick, so let me just mention it before I forget. Bring it over here. I'll, I'll pull up the window, and then I'll drag it over as soon as it loads. It's going to load. Yes, there we go. So the um, speaker stuff for the conference been talking about and blabbing about somewhat regularly. And it's going to be a game developer conference for, well, a conference for game developers, primarily focused on Unity development stuff. So I'm looking for speakers who can talk on actionable Unity topics. So if you've got something that you think every Unity developer should be using already and you're finding that they're not, like some new tech that's been out for a year or two that everybody should be getting into and using or some workflow thing or some other process or just trick that you think everybody should be doing and that you think that most people that watch will be considering using right away, then please just submit it here. Just go to game.courses slash speakers. And the reason I say that is I want to make sure that we're not just talking about things that are coming like long in the future or things that you need uh, a, a 10 man art team and a technical director and stuff for. I, I want it to be stuff that the smaller indie developers can use right away without needing to restructure or build a very specific type of project. So stuff that applies to really everybody. So if you've got something like that, um, just go to game.courses slash speakers, submit it, and I will be in contact with you probably this week. So I've got a couple ideas down here. And again, these are just suggestions and ideas. Some of them are things that people have already submitted and um, I think will be great talks and some are just others that people have requested. And if you got something else, of course, just submit that as well. All right, I think that was the, my, my pitch on signing up for that. Oh, and the other one, if you haven't already signed up for it and looked at it, was the mastermind group. So I've got over 400 people applied so far for these. They're um, totally free, just a group that you would meet with other developers that are at about a similar level with you regularly to just um, talk through game development problems, issues, um, inspiration, and other things, and kind of meet regularly as a common thing that I think has a lot of value. And I've talked a lot about that, so I don't want to blab too much about it. Here's the link where you can here, I'll drop it in there, game.courses slash mm and game.courses slash speaker. Or I think it's speak or speakers. One of those two. Well, let me go back. Speakers. So either one of those, if you've got a, something to talk about, please send it. Or if you just want to join a group or read more about the groups, Go um, submit it now. I'm going to start matching these groups relatively soon. Like I said, we've got, I think, over 400 people signed up. Let me let me check how we're at now. Forms, I think. Load so slow. Why is it loading so slow? Come on. This is the slowest it's ever loaded. For some reason, my internet is just... Busted. All right. So applications 412. So go ahead and sign up if you want to join. We're going to have lots of groups. Should be super handy and helpful. And it doesn't matter where you are, or what skill level you're at. Um, uh, if you're interested and available and want to join a group, now's the chance. All right. I think that was all I had. And oh, what's up, Dave? I just saw Dave in chat. I have to um, catch up with you soon, man. 
get you in here. All right. Well, I'm going to um, drop out, guys. So thanks again, everybody, for coming out and visiting me. Hopefully this was helpful. Learn a little bit about something about menu items and all that other stuff and saw a little bit of the balance for the rider giveaway next week. All right. I'll talk to you all in a couple days. And oh, make sure you subscribe. Hit like and all that stuff. I'll probably be dropping some more interesting stuff soon. Also, the winner, Tupac, send me an email and I will send you over your prize.